All right, so uh, checklist for Maya. The first thing I like to do once I've imported my geometry is I make sure I'm in the modeling uh, menu here. You just go to Mesh Display and then Unlock Normals, which will be right here. And then Mesh Display Set to Face. So that basically just sort of nukes all of the uh, potential imported normal mischief. Max is kind of bad about that. And then I hit Soften Edge. So now everything is soft. And you can see here in the UVs how uh, all the edges now are selected and everything here looks like it's nice and bubbly. I don't have any strong shadows anywhere. Everything is nice and smooth. Uh, this may not uh, cause issues, but in order to make sure this bakes as nicely as possible, I like to do one more step here. Uh, and that is to go through and select all of the perimeter edges. Uh, there is a way to do this. You go to select shell border, but for whatever reason, I'm not having a lot of uh, success with that. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong and hopefully somebody will leave a comment uh, so that we can all learn together how to fix that. But anyway, there aren't that many shells. And when you, I got a little overlap there, I'll fix that in a second. When you select one, you oftentimes are selecting part of another, so you don't actually have to grab them all. But it's not that bad, just hold shift and double click. So I'm just gonna kind of run through here grab all these guys and uh, let's just zoom out take a quick look okay so just a few more left to go now there's a scenario if you have like a cylinder where you wouldn't necessarily want the the uh the longitudinal edge like for instance if i've got the uh th this geometry here i probably yeah so that edge is maybe going to bake a little bit oddly but you won't really see it i mean i can easily just deselect it by uh, hitting shift there but otherwise you should be pretty safe doing this. And I think I can darken this a little bit. This guy missed a couple here. And it's not the end of the world if you miss them, you just will get better bakes. So there's where that one was. Also, these are old UVs. I wouldn't necessarily say this is the best UVs I've ever done. There's a lot of wasted space and these edges here should be parallel and you can see they are not. Um, so this is probably not something that I ran through UV layout where, the, where there's a really easy uh, way to make things uh, rectangular, but it's no big deal. This is just a little demo here. So I'm going to go to mesh display now that all my, my external border edges are selected and select harden edge. You want to make sure you don't accidentally harden any edges that are inside because then you'll get a little like, a, for instance, this edge here, it's inside. If that was hard, there would be an issue. You want to make sure that all hardened edges have a little bit of uh, breathing room there. So let's come over here and just tweak that. And another thing that I like to do whenever I've got a piece like this where I know I'm gonna wanna use an image, like a photo for the lens here, is I will actually give that area a little bit more UV space than it probably uh, probably warrants. Uh, like if this was just a piece of metal, it wouldn't it wouldn't get that much space, but, but uh, like this is the actual sort of external geometry here. So you can see how much bigger it got. That'll just sort of help it uh, with the resolution so that it's nice and pretty. So if you have anything like that, just punch it up a little bit in the UVs. You don't have to go crazy with it, but a little extra helps. Uh, so the UVs are okay. Nothing's, uh, also with Painter, it's really important you don't have anything that goes outside of zero to one. So that's a, a hard learned lesson. All of the geometry has been unlocked, uh, smoothed, and then the, the border edge is hardened. You can see all of the naming pieces here. All that stuff makes pretty good sense. So I'll go ahead and select all the geometry. I don't think it makes much difference if you grab the geo like this or if you grab the group. Also probably not necessary to group it. It's mostly just like, just to, to, to keep the scene neat. Oh, and there's one more thing. In fact, if there's only one more thing, I'll be surprised. But for now, I can only think of one more thing. You wanna make sure that everything is assigned to the same material. Uh, unless there's a really good reason to have different material IDs, like for instance, if you've got a giant vehicle and you want the tires to be on their own UV sheet and you want the whatever chassis to be on its own UV sheet, then you might break things up by material. But otherwise, it makes it much more difficult to work in uh, Painter if you can't see the whole thing or you can't work on the whole thing at once. So again, just go ahead and make yourself a blend or whatever, call it something that makes sense, select all your geometry, make sure it's assigned. Okay. So now we're gonna to go to File, Export Selection, and we will select FBX Export as our uh, preset here. Select the correct uh, directory, and then I am calling this 
probably should have named it pistol low, but whatever, anyway, frame low. So this is what I exported out of ZBrush initially because that bad bake was just the undynamized geometry that was frame high. And then after I dynamized it, I had uh, frame dynamized high. Uh, and you can see how much bigger that file is. It is significantly gigantic. Uh, it's, uh, you know, 80% uh, of a gigabyte. So probably there could be some optimization there, but it's just a matter of you can either optimize the ZBrush file, which takes 10 minutes, or you can just export the giant file, which takes 10 minutes. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and export this as frame low. The default settings here are probably going to be fine. We'll just hit export selection. And now that's an exporter, we will head over to Painter. Okay, so I'm using uh, Painter version 2017.4.0. So if you're down the road a bit, you might see something a little bit different. But uh, to begin, I'm going to hit File, New. And uh, hit Select. And we'll go ahead and bring in frame low and just hit OK. So here's our geometry. And I have a menu here called texture set settings, which is open by default. If you don't see it, you can just go to view and then uh, views and you should see it right here. Texture set settings. I'm going to go to this little bake textures button. Make sure all this stuff is turned on. I'm going to set my output size to 2048, which means those are the maps that I'll be baking. You can always come back in and rebake this down the road at a higher resolution, and everything will update. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I want to come over here to this little window and select frame dynameshed high. And then uh, all this stuff is probably fine. I'm going to go to match. You want to switch it from always to by mesh name. That way it'll make sure that it is uh, ignoring things that are not the same mesh name. And then for anti-aliasing, probably 4x4 is fine. 8x8 is going to look good too. Just to make this not take forever, I'm going to set this to 4x4. And that's all you should have to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, bake pistol one textures and then pause the video because it, it will likely take a little while again because that high poly geometry is so huge. But it'll look nice when it's done and uh, you don't have to wait at all because of the magic of video editing. So just a second. All right, so here is the finished result. And uh, that probably took about 20 minutes to bake. But you can see it's it's relatively nice and clean. Now there are some issues with scalloping on some of this round stuff here, which is, oh, I don't know, certainly fixable if I had done these bakes in Marmoset but not quite as easily solved here. So I may get in there and, and try to fix that. Uh, it's, it's very easy to actually re-import maps or import maps and, and replace the uh, maps that were created procedurally. And I could probably have resolved that by setting my uh, hardened edges up a little bit better. But it's a pretty common issue with, with round things. So uh, getting beautiful bakes on round things can be a little bit tricky uh, and is a little bit outside of the uh, intention of this tutorial, I mostly just wanted to cover up how to uh, cover how to set up the uh, uh, high poly and low poly and how to get decent results. So in the next few tutorials uh, in this uh, or next few videos in this tutorial series, I'm going to go ahead and, and cover certainly not an exhaustive feature breakdown of what Painter can do, but mostly just the kind of stuff that I use on a regular basis that I find to be particularly useful. So please stick around for that. If you would like to, at this point, follow along, this painter file in this state, minus the high poly stuff, because you don't really need that, uh, is available for purchase on my Gumroad page, uh, which is going to be Gumroad forward slash Isaac Oster. And it is available for 99 cents. So if you'd like to follow along with this exact file, then please feel free to run over there and grab that file. Otherwise, uh, just stay tuned.